we're going to talk about Cisco and Cisco's entree into the private 5G market. And again, you know, we touched on this earlier, you know, um, we talk a lot about private 5G here and it's a crowded market, but Cisco's diving in. Private networks are not new. We've seen companies like AT&T, Verizon, Amazon, Ericsson, and others doing some really cool stuff with private G networks. Cisco says that what they're doing won't compete with Telco's private 5G. Ron, talk with us a little bit more about what you know about that. Well, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head, Shelley. Uh, the fact is that Cisco's entering a crowded, already crowded 5G private network right. market. And so that, that begs the question, why? Well, uh, it's very, uh, I think, straightforward. Uh, the fact is that Cisco has a huge enterprise presence and Absolutely. huge influence across the enterprise realm. And so this is something that's uh, well suited for them uh, to address. And uh, I'm certainly looking forward to hearing more details about uh, this initiative uh, at Mobile World Congress, where they are going to, again, uh, showcase you know uh, what their 5G private network offering uh, is uh, about. And uh, so one key aspect is hopefully more details on the mid-band spectrum right. that they will be supporting in terms of uh, this offering. And as we know, many organizations are using uh, mid-band CBRS spectrum in order to uh, you know, initiate and uh, also uh, use uh, 5G private networking as well as you know, 4G and 5G private networking capabilities. And so uh, this is, I, I think, uh, something that Cisco will obviously address. And so this is something that uh, we'll have to wait for more uh, detail on. And I think it's going to be interesting because, you know, with this uh, crowded mix, yes, you have Eric's and Nokia who are, you know, high pedigree 5G equipment suppliers uh, competing right. in this space. Certainly, you know, the Verizons and, uh, and uh, other major operators are already targeting the space, AT&T naturally. And, and likewise, uh, that, you know, the major cloud players, uh, you right. have obviously Amazon and Google. And so now, you know, the operators and the cloud players are kind of eyeing each other now, like, right. okay, uh, who, who's going <laughs> to be the first one to, you know, uh, put that proverbial knife in the back right. when there it comes gonna, to these uh, market we're gonna, opportunities. We're going to duke and, it out. <laughs> yeah, right. And then there's the start startups like uh, Betacom. And, and uh, right. so I, I think uh, uh, Cisco can actually uh, make a difference here because with all of the attention that's been uh, paid uh, to the space, it hasn't really uh, been overwhelming in terms of market expansion. Right. Uh, we're, we're seeing you know, some of the initial growth projections not quite panning out. And I don't think uh, Cisco by itself is going to uh, cause a, a massive uptick. But I, I think it can move the needle because, again, what we were talking about, the fact that it's such a major player in the enterprise space, I think this will uh, help uh, adoption across you know more enterprises in terms of right. using 5g private networking that wasn't quite there before uh, because uh, it was for example uh, a uh, maybe a startup that was making the offering or you know they aren't quite sure about using a cloud provider for 5g private networking right. etc and I think uh, one thing that Cisco was keen on emphasizing is the fact that uh, they're offering, can be uh, used by a mobile operator. This is not, you know, a direct oh, yeah. competition uh, offering at all. And so we can anticipate, you know, a fair amount, I believe, of service providers, uh, you know, quite simply white labeling uh, the Cisco offering and right. you know, making it uh, uh, their own uh, brand. And uh, so I, I think this will actually help rekindle uh, more interest in 5G private networking, which is there. It's definitely right. there. It's Absolutely. just, you know, how uh, aggressive uh, will this uh, market advance over the next uh, couple of years plus is now uh, uh, there's more hedging. And I think this will help uh, uh, dampen some of that hedging uh, because of Cisco's entry into this market. Absolutely. And, you know, as you mentioned early on, they have the enterprise customer base. They have the trust of the enterprise customer base. There's a lot to be said for partnering with, um, you know, that depending on the initiatives you're, you're trying to roll out. So it'll be interesting. We will, of course, look for more information from Cisco on that front and uh, keep our eyes on what's happening there for sure. 
Yeah, I, I agree. And I think uh, one more thing I want to add is that it will be a consumption-based model, you know, pay-as-you-go yeah. as a service. Yay. And I think that will also help, you know, yeah. they're not going to be, you know, locked into some two-year contract like with, you know, the initial mobile phones or any right. uh, smartphone offerings and things like that. Yeah. I think this will definitely entice the uh, the enterprises to, you know, definitely investigate more because they're not going to be, in, you know, in a lock-in contract to get their private network up and running. Yeah. No, and I think that that that's really an important point, Ron, that you mentioned. You know, I think that people are not only enterprises, but organizations of all size are really realizing that when you're looking at um, adopting some kind of technology solution or any kind of solution, it's like, can I avoid vendor lock-in? Because things, you know, the digital landscape changes so quickly, needs change so quickly, consumption-based models are so attractive, and really situations where you can enter into a relationship with a vendor and you know you're not going to get locked in, I think that that gives a lot of peace of mind. So I think that's important regardless of what you're selling, to think about how you can craft your offering in such a way that it is consumption-based and it's something that doesn't tie a customer in on a long-term basis. I just don't think that's good business, really. I mean, it is it is good business for the brand, but it's not good business for customers. And I think customers are getting savvy enough that they're saying, you know, we don't want that, you know? Uh, yeah, I think well, you're saying that uh, across many uh, market segments. It's Absolutely. not just telecommunications, yeah. but you know, for across you know, the board, different car service and, and so forth. Yeah, there's just yeah. Uh, I think more of that flexibility, and yeah. I and I think this is a, a difference maker in yeah. terms of uh, speeding up adoption rates. Right yeah. on. I agree. I agree. 